Hi, everyone, and welcome. Today is Saturday. It is Saturday, March the 11th. No, April, what, is, what day is it? May 11th, 2019. <laughs> it's the day before his Mother's Day. How lest I forget. And welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. Today in our room, we have Alex, we have Christine, David, Deb, Don, Eva, Lucia, Marlena, Selesh, Sheer, Stephanie. It's nice to have so many people in the room. And of course, we have our good friend, Jim Charles. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? I am doing well today. And who do you have in your room? I have Angie and Barb mm -hmm. and let's see there's jack and erica and lydia and ray perfect and so we have a few announcements uh the big announcement is at the end of august we have the fourth ascension workshop in rochester new york august 8th through the 12th and you have up to 20 plus spaces and you're booking people every single day so if people want to find out more about that, they can go to the website, hukalo.org or humancolony.com. So tell people about what's going to happen at the workshop. Well, we're still getting the, our uh, agenda together, but right now there's going to be a magic portion. There's going to be mm -hmm. um, galactic energy healing uh, for those that didn't have it before and a brush up for those that did. Yeah. And we're going to have... Um, Max with uh, some history, exopolitical history of the earth, which is oh, nice. very interesting, I yeah. think. Uh, we're gonna have uh, perhaps sign language, galactic sign language, which is different. Hmm. I'm not sure how much of that we're gonna get down here. We got a little bit of it but so far. Um, galactic language. Galactic language, yes, the light languages and galactic languages are very important right now. They seem yeah. to be helping a lot with spiritual lives, with, with enlightenment, messaging. Uh, so we're going to do a, a, some time with that as well. Also with uh, telepathy and telekinesis and all that stuff that we want to work on. So it's going to be a full, and there could be a chakra class if we have time. But because um, um, there is a lot of information about the chakras coming in. So... And they're, okay. it's, they're adva it's advanced information because the chakras are more important than we thought, I think. so. Mm, perfect. And then, uh, so also, too, coming up next week, you have your energy class, right? That people that can still find it for? Galactic Energy Healing. There's mm -hmm. a class for those that did not get it yet. It's not the teacher's class. It's just the regular Galactic Energy Healing and so far we have, I think, four signed up yes. for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's not too late to sign up for it. It's $111. And it's going, there is a few new things in this class that it keeps evolving. The, the class keeps evolve, evolving, but it's, that's a wonderful thing. I think it will for a while because there's mm -hmm. so many things that they're discovering. So, and we're in the right time for that kind of energy. The people that have taken the galactic energy healing class are really happy about it and let me know that their their healing is much more complete and much better than it was before so it's really a beautiful thing um and uh, hope hopefully you will you'll join us for that day and also too coming up in canada and when is that going to be the 21st 22nd and 23rd of June. Of June. Right. Solstice. Heart and Solstice. Yes. Right. And that's sold out, but you are taking uh, names on a waiting list in potential to yes. uh, plan another class if there's enough interest yes. so in the future. Micheline Roche is the uh, coordinator of that. I will be the teaching galactic energy healing at that class and doing some channeling and different things. But that class, that uh, session has already sold out. Yeah, it is really amazing. It's wonderful, but mm -hmm. they are, they do have a waiting list. Okay, so if you are interested in and in possibly and you're in Canada or that would be an easy location, where in Canada? It's in the Ottawa area. Okay, so if you're in the Ottawa area or you can get there easily, well, then there are people from all over Canada and different places going. So even from the west coast is coming 
to uh, this uh, particular uh, hardened solstice. It's a really, uh, really going to be a very wonderful uh, program. So, so if you're if you want to sign up for that, and even if you don't get through, if there's enough people to sign up, they will make another date. So please, uh, please possibly we'll do yeah. a second one if yeah. it's really very successful. Well, no promises on that, but yeah, if there's enough interest, we I will talk to Micheline about that. So. Perfect. Okay, so you can gauge your interest. And then there's one thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, we've been discussing with Max uh, about now we're gonna we're looking into and Slava is gonna be uh, helping or Alex will be helping to um, with uh, streaming on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And we may be moving uh, from the Google Plus to the Zoom room or doing a little bit of both. So just keep your eyes peeled and watch the website because that's something that's coming. We're trying to broaden our audience and also with the changes that are coming in YouTube with different, uh, with all the new algorithms and everything, we just wanna be prepared if we need to, uh, we need to have a different platform. So everyone think good thoughts, but it's quite possible that very soon within the next month, we're gonna start streaming on uh, Facebook as well as on YouTube, so. They will, yeah. I, I guess he will let you know how to do that. Yeah, uh, Slava's gonna, knows how and apparently Mark Zenzao is also uh, on top of it, so. So, uh, and you, I, I guess it's going to be it, supposedly it's supposed to be you don't have to go to actually be on Facebook for those no. who don't like Facebook you right. don't have to actually be on Facebook to be a part of this you can right. be zoom right so so we're, we're we're looking at many things to uh, make sure that people who are with us can stay with us and then maybe we can also start to reach some other people as well yeah so yay so, so we have uh, a list that a very extensive list of requests. Oh, I'll just start from the beginning. <laughs> uh, the first one was Nefertiti was requested. Then Grindel or Ish, uh, Metrotron was requested. The Argothans uh, were also requested. Tukur, of course, and uh, Sheer requested a disciple that was with Jesus, one of the 12 original disciples, if possible. And I, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. I think that was it. Elijah. Well, and Elijah. Mm. I don't know that Elijah was requested, but he's coming, right? Yes, he's coming. <laughs> yeah, he's coming, I feel Actually, like. Yeah, Angie requested him, but I I, oh, okay. I knew he was coming before she did, so. Okay, all right, yeah. He, he has something to say today. So. Okay, perfect. I hadn't heard his voice for several days, and then mm. last night he said, "I'm coming tomorrow." So I went, "Okay, oh, okay. where have you been?" Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on holiday. <laughs> he was like, oh, "Where have you been?" <laughs> so, explain yourself, young man. Oh, <laughs> really? and how and how was that? What was the answer you got there? He was going none of your business. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Elijah's Elijah. I'm sure he went somewhere nice. Sure. Holiday Inn or something. Right. So. <laughs> Red Roof Inn. What's the one where they leave the light on for you? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and Mary, Mary Magdalene uh, is requested by Christine, mm -hmm. Joanna, and Susanna. Mm -hmm. I don't know who Joanna and Susanna are, but. Joanna and Susanna? Who is that, Christine? Oh, disciples of Jesus. Oh, yeah, they only mentioned the twelve men, but there were women also. There, it was yes. in their house, their gathering. Yeah, they took yes. care of everything. Thank you, yeah, divine, you divine know. feminine. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I said Metroton. I said Metroton. Metra. Metatron. I said that. that Metatron. Yes. Metatron. Thank you. Yeah, I said All it. Right, so, very good. Okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. And um, uh, who's going to say some blessings? Yes, who's going to do the blessings? Yes, Barbara, will do it. Barbara will do one. I'll do okay, one. Dad will do one. David will do one. I'll do one. I'm Lucia. Who's, Lucia's do one. Hi. Okay. okay. Okay, so should we start on this side or your side? Which one? I just wanted to point out 
Yeah. Lucia is a Micheline who is in charge of the heart and solstice. Yes. So, so. thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Lucia, for all your work. And and it's sold out. And did you want to add anything to what we said? Well, it's my absolute pleasure. Um, I would say that... Um, Yes, I, please do contact me. I'll give you my uh, my email address now. It's M as Micheline, L as Lucia, Rauch as R O C H at Videotron dot ca and um, please do send me your name because Jim is and Angie would be willing to come back if there's enough interest and so yes, it is sold out. I know that uh, we didn't um, announce it. Uh, early enough on Hukalo is just because I'm part of a meditation group and so many were already interested that before I even had anything set up, I had like 11 names and there's only about 21 or 22 spaces. We're in a small uh, rural area in, um, in a beautiful BNB actually, but uh, the, the room where, it will, where everything will happen and take place is, is small. And so I do apologize for this because in a way, had I known that the interest was so, um, is so great, I would have perhaps have made uh, arrangements to have more people, um, to, have to have a bigger space, you know. But um, yes, and Jim, I'm just so grateful that you are coming. And then there is so much interest for galactic energy healing at this time. So, um, so again, my email address is mlroch at videotron, V I D E O T R O N uh, dot C A. Thank you. Very good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's where we are. Start? Barbara. Or Angie's going to start. Okay, go ahead. All Barbara's right. starting. Go ahead, Barbara. Go on, Barbara. As you dwell in the third dimension and are a part of all the energies thereof, you understand that there is much disturbance right now and there is much things to overcome. Therefore, keep your spirits as high as possible and reach out in prayer as often as you can to keep things balanced and going well for yourself. Thank you. Okay, um, so on your site also, is Angie doing one? Are you doing one? Oh, uh, I was going to let uh, all the people online. Okay, fine. Deb, go ahead. Deb? She's coming. I'm here. Sorry, I had to unmute. I have to use my wakaya. Onaita a naiko osaita. Oh, a kakai to so naya. Oh, my ka a so ya kaya. No, you ka a ta iya. Oh, my ya a. My yoko uta isaya. Oh, a ka a. Naika o naika. Namaste. Dear people of Earth, we love you very much. But we are very concerned at this time because there are much disturbances happening and we see that it is affecting you in a negative way. We are going to send our energy to you for your help and for your relief. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, David. Okay. Ele waka tukush no wahatana ke we share etama oka na wa ishi kine wa atema la shuko. Tenete ke kona wa hata na shewe hete ke lewe ichi. Tuno kona wa hata shewe heki tine weke keto wa shewe la. The light continues to shine and we continue to send our energies to you. It is a critical time at, at this juncture that we step in and speak to you and know that we are with you. We love you and we are supporting you. Thank you. Lucia, Micheline, good. Alasasha nomi kilishisika, 
השסלה אשונימי, כשסקולה שאלה שסי ניקילי שיסקה, השוסקלה שסי אשוסנה מאקילי שיסקי, השוסנה אקו שסי, אלומי ניקילי שיסקה. ננסה. The angels and all creator beings are here to support what is happening on the earth at this time. We love you and are lifting you up in prayer. We know that there are many things that will happen and must be taken care of. But at this point, all things are in the hands of God. Much love and many blessings. Okay, thank you. And then Temple is going to do a blessing as well. Go ahead, Temple. Nashataya Saniki ku onala aka kugre shetu pagi ijanata saku onati asha mami olu o bosha hatiata saniti kuno totayaka lana i siti tiosho no soko bashina tiata sana na lahana ni itiata na hana. Namaste. Summon your courage and be resolute at this time, for some of you may be challenged. Do not see it as a negative thing, but as one that strengthens character, one that strengthens your mission, and one that will bring you through in a greater way than you can possibly imagine. For without these challenges, you would be weaker and not as alert. Mm. Very true. Thank you so much. Also, just uh, before we get going, uh, some requests from the chat came through from uh, fairies and uh, elementals, if possible, and also uh, the Andrani civilization. So, how do you spell that? A D A N D R O N Y. That's how it's spelled, Androni. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Just to make sure that they, if they're there, they know they're talking about them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. perfect. All Very right. good. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm going to do a small meditation. We'll see who comes through first. I know it's going to be Elijah, so <laughs> be prepared. I have no idea what he's going to talk about today. Uh, so he's always welcome. So, all right. Greetings, I am Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. Thank you. I have come today to talk to you about something very important. Many of you have great missions, and many of you have great things that must be done, and you are examples to the world. But remember this, you cannot be the great example that you want to be without true prayer, and true meditation. Remember that when you do stop to do your prayers and meditations, that they mean something to you, that you're not just reciting verses that you heard, but you're exactly putting thought into what you are saying, that you are bringing your heart into your prayer life, bringing your heart into your meditations, so that they may actually work in a greater way. Not that if you say a prayer and do not mean it with your heart, that God does not hear it and accept that because you have taken your time and your effort to do so. However, when you put your heart and mind and soul and spirit into your meditations and into your prayers, they become something fresh and new every time. It is not that you are just saying words, but that you are actually communicating with God, that you are actually communicating with the spirits thereof and actually res getting a response from them because they are feeling your heart. Now, some of you say, but I don't have a lot of time and there are days when I don't feel well. And there are times when I'm this and that and the other thing are happening and my meditations 
are not as deep as I wish them to be. However, make them shorter, but make them work. Make them shorter, but make them work. It does not matter how long you pray. The Pharisees prayed for hours, but they only prayed for hours so that everybody would see them praying. You understand that? But a short, meaningful, heartfelt prayer can go much farther than hours of just empty nothingness. It is the essence of your prayers that makes the difference. It is the essence of your prayers that will change your example. It is the essence of your prayers that will cause people to be healed, that will cause things to happen that are unexpected and that are miraculous. If you go around reciting a prayer, the same words every day and every time you pray, and they mean nothing to you, then how is this prayer really a good prayer? Unless you take that old prayer and bring new life to it. When you're actually saying the words, you're actually listening to what you're saying and bringing about new life for that prayer. The Lord's Prayer, for example, many recite it, but it's just blah, 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 blah. Bring life to it. Listen to what you're saying. Bring your heart into it. Understand what the prayer is about so that you may be actually communicating with God and the Spirit. Not that you're just mumbling words, empty and meaningless. Of course, God will bless your time that you've spent in prayer no matter how shallow it is but make it work make it full make it meaningful bring your love to it because there are those out there that you're going to be praying for that you want to have some impact on with god's prayers god's power Oh, I love when prayer is true. I love when prayer is full. I love when prayer has meaning and has action come to it because it is so meaningful. Because every time that it's meaningful, actions will come to it in some way. Actions will come if it only to build your heart, your faith, your love toward God. There is still a great action there when it's meaningful. Much love to all of you. And I will, if there is any questions, I will take them, but there usually isn't. If there's any questions, does anyone have a question? Um, I'd like to say thank you, Elijah. All of your messages are always so on the money and, and really important to hear and to clarify things. And so I, wow. I take I take them very much to heart every time you speak. So thank you very much. Thank you Lord. and much love and many blessings to you. Thank you. Um, Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Hi, Elijah. Um, I have a question about karma. I find out recently in a challenging session that unless we don't feel, if we don't feel guilty about doing something, then karma is not created. So my question is, um, there are people here on this planet who really commit horrible crimes against humanity and they actually enjoy killing does that mean that they do not create any karma how does it all work no they create their own karma by their actions 
the thing is there's dark karma and there's positive karma and if they create their dark karma out of joy of doing evil then that is a karma unto itself that is not positive but you see when it's not that you don't create karma when you don't do it when you're not doing something bad but you're creating a more positive karma the things that you do out of positivity create positive karma and not negative karma if you're doing something good for someone else or if you're doing something that is not a bad thing you're not creating bad karma but you're creating a more positive karma now these people that are negative and live in in that negative kind of reality they create their negative karma in many ways so the karma of the world is created by all humanity together okay i understand so it's not just if we have emotions of guilt or not thank you also want to ask because i'm trying not to harm anybody including not to harm animals but honestly speaking <coughs> the invasion of ants and i keep murdering them feeling really weird about it so how does that work now well <laughs> remember that all all creatures all living things return to energy once they are gone and does, does an ant have a soul? I don't know. I will have to ask God about that when I see him. But I have a feeling that they don't. But we'll, But so they, that's a different kind of getting rid of. That's a problem. They are part of the food chain. They are part of nature and the, uh, the how things were made by God to work out correctly. Because without one animal or one insect or without uh, all the different things that exist, then things would be incomplete. So when you are getting rid of your ant problem, um, maybe you can sweep them out the door if you feel bad. Yeah, they're kind of tiny, so it's hard to catch them and release, but at least I am killing them very quickly. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> All right, thank you so much. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> I also, can I, can I add something? That yeah. When people say things like karma's a bitch and everything, karma doesn't come to get people to satisfy an angry mob who is angry about what a person did and right. people can you know that's that that judgment is also creating negative karma for the person who's screaming karma's a bitch and karma's going to get you so i just right. want to bring that exactly up. because yeah. oh yeah. if if you're screaming that you then you're not being positive so you're creating negative karma exactly all right uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just still laughing. But I, I, I was, Alex has a I question. Go ahead. A little bit delighted that she was not even uh, willing to kill an ant. So that's that, I know she's trying to catch and release. That's awesome. Catch and release is difficult. <laughs> a broom might be a better solution. Yeah, or a piece of piece of candy. They can all just sort of candy, lead them out the door. Yes, that's right. Okay, Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. I just uh, want, want to say thank you, Evergia, for what uh, you do. You're welcome. And uh, I have a question. If yeah. you want to, to share uh, your last day uh, before the asc uh, asc ascension, and uh, how did that work? Or what, what did you feel in that moment? Uh, I didn't catch the question. Oh, the Can you explain? Yes, yes, the transition in the body of light. Uh, how how it was? What did you feel? Oh, I, when you do the trans, when you transition like that, you feel only the love of God. You feel every molecule of your body on fire for God, with joy, with love, with understanding um it's ecstasy really 
so you you become one but you also have your um, let's say persona like uh, consciousness of course it's just being in the proximity of god when he does something of that nature that you feel so close and so joyful because he is is in, in such close proximity to you you just feel that great delight and joy and it's hard to it's beyond your wildest understanding of ecstasy yeah maybe not but i can i can have the glimpse of that yes yeah. thank Absolutely. you thank you very much thank you very much much love to you all thank you and and there's another one more question if if we may yes see the karma of you saying you did not get any questions now you're getting all the questions uh don has a question go ahead blessings elijah blessings i would like to know uh recently like about within three weeks ago there was a number of octopus that got out and walked on land what seemed almost like a major protest can you give me a <laughs> uh reason for their exodus from the ocean yes there was there was something that was attacking them or or something in the water that was harming them they felt uncomfortable they did not feel a welcome in the water at that time and that is why they did it was and, it oh, yes. sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead well i was going to say um I had opened some portals up with the oceans of the Milky Way galaxy uh, a few months ago to try to remove some of the radiation from the Pacific. But anyway, I was just wondering if uh, something had migrated in. No, n nothing like that. Uh, but yes, the radiation is harmful to all the every species. So if they came in contact with a you see and when uh radiation can uh travel differently in water than it does in on land so they might have gotten a very big uh amount of it in a current or something of that nature and decided to walk out of that area so i cannot tell you exactly what they experienced but i can tell you it wasn't comfortable okay thank you very much you're welcome blessings blessings okay thank you is there any other questions in this room or oh Ava has another question go ahead Ava thank you <laughs> um well different question and I think as Alexis started talking a little bit about it which brought my question we are on this planet we are quite afraid of dying there are a lot of people who are basically terrifying by the idea but how is i would assume that dying might be actually a pleasure since it's so normal can you can you give us a little clue how does it feel to die or leave a physical body well it feels it doesn't you don't, don't feel it at all actually um when people have uh, look at the near-death experiences that you have uh, you can read about they don't talk about feeling leaving their body but they feel that they have left and they can see their body sometimes and they're heading toward the light and they're seeing relatives that look much younger and uh than they did when they passed on they're experiencing the beginnings of uh, the afterlife without actually being a part of it so they're feeling actually nothing but positivity because their energy is moving into a different place it's just moving from one place to another it's not painful it's not it's not um it's just natural they're going through the veil they're heading toward eternity and so when they get to eternity that's when they start feeling something Thank you so much. Can I can I add something? Of course. <clears throat> when I was six years old, um, I died in a pool. I was uh, swimming uh, at a pool party, and there was a little girl that was holding on to the side of the pool because she couldn't swim. And at one moment, and she would sort of kick off from the 
the side and then grab on again. And one time she kicked back too much. And when she went to grab the side of the pool, she couldn't grab it. So she grabbed me and we went under and they pulled me off the bottom of the pool. And <clears throat> the only thing that I remember is I remember, and, and this is one of the most vivid memories that I have in, in my lifetime is that there was a moment where I stopped struggling. There was the confusion of why am I not able to get my head above water? And then there was the moment of letting go and just relaxing and then waking up in a different place. So it was like I closed my eyes in the pool and then I woke up somewhere else. And there was no pain. There was only the moment before and then the moment after. Correct. And there was no yeah. sensation whatsoever. Excuse me? There was no sensation whatsoever. It was Not of dying. There was no, the sensation of, of letting go. There was a exactly. sensation of relaxing into the, relaxing into the struggle and then and, and very much waking up where I was. Yeah. Well, you yeah. didn't quite make it to the other side. So no. you have a near death experience. They sort of brought you back before you had the uh, chance to. Yeah. To I was standing that. in a little white room and I was standing there and I had the experience of waiting. And then the next thing I knew, I was back on the side of the pool choking up water. So, yeah. Yes, they knew you were coming back, so they didn't send you on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, there's a comment here. Our society has input uh, into us a fear of death because it is unknown. And so people uh, hold on to that as yeah. they're nearing the end of their life. And so it's the fear that of not what's going to happen. Well, yeah. fear is what uh, everything is manipulated by on this planet. Mm. If, if you take away the fear in your heart about things, they couldn't manipulate you. They couldn't make you do what they want you to do. There would be no manipulation whatsoever. You would know exactly what you wanted to do. But with fear, they can take that fear and twist it and make you do what they want you to do because they threaten you with that fearful thought. So think about that. Be fearless and you will have more of your identity and, and you will have less, you will be less controlled by other things. Mm. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Christine had one more question. Yeah, I'm surprised there has been. <laughs> See, it's your karma. It's the subject, yes. Um, I was wondering, when you're speaking of death and the fear of death and whatnot, my um, compassion and um, a lot of my, peer, my um, prayers go out to um, people who are being tortured and um, children who are starving to death or, you know, going through all these little pain or being abused. And I know that some um, escape through, um, some escape through creating other alternative um, uh, characters, multiple personalities. Um, but what about um, people who are being tortured? Like we hear a lot about women who are being tortured. Well, I hear a lot about women being tortured because they're standing up for um, uh, women's freedom in Israel, or not Israel, but you know, in various places like that. Do they separate from their body so that they're not feeling the pain? Actually, they're courageous and they're standing up for what they believe and they know that they will make a difference, they do feel the pain. It might be not be as harsh as it would otherwise because they are in their faith, they are giving themselves over to God, they're giving themselves to the cause and they know that it is right. And as you give yourself to causes that you know that are right, it's not that you don't feel the pain. It's not that. But you know that what you are doing will change the world in some way. And that is why they endure it. Wow. 
I was hoping it would be sort of like um, sometimes when people are in accidents, um, they don't really feel the thing of accidents. They um, separate from their bodies immediately. Yes. But and, understand this. Okay. Without the pain, yes. would there be any true change? Without that sacrifice, what if they weren't giving of if they weren't feeling anything if they weren't sacrificing for their cause then mm -hmm. people would see that they weren't feeling that pain people would see oh they're just nothing's really happening but to know that somebody is suffering for what they believe to that extent changes the way people think and the way people act and that is why they are standing and being courageous for these causes because they know that people will see what they are doing and it will change some will be more afraid but they will know that these people are courageous and that they are doing it to help them those that are being uh that are under prison-like conditions and cannot escape from them but you see these people will in effect help help them in the long run what about the people who are doing the um um torturing i mean they can't be unaffected they are not unaffected they are not unaffected but they also believe in their cause but um, they also see how much these people believe in their cause. And they, guess what, realize that they would not put themselves in that place because they, they do not believe in their cause enough to do that. If they were put in the same place, they would not do the same thing. Yeah. I have no doubt. <laughs> Thank so you very that much. affects the way people think, the way uh -huh. people are, and the way people act. And after it was over, they say, you know, maybe, maybe they were right. Because they believed way more than I did in that cause. And they believed so strongly that they allowed themselves to either to have this torture or even die so that changes a thought process for sure well what about the person that's ordering it like um the king or the prince or whatever the heck he is in some pay. that is a karma and they will pay for their judgment because uh -huh. judge not lest you be judged so they have uh, the afterlife to look at that kind of thing but god is looking for a more positive things but during your life review these things will be definitely gone over many times so i don't know exactly how god works that because i've only been through my own reviews but i know that there are some reviews that are very severe thank you you're welcome can I, 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 this is an interesting conversation. I, I had a very beautiful conversation with my friend yesterday um, who has been on the webinar before. Her name's Crystal. She left sort of the spiritual world doing like psychic work and stuff like that to go and work with severely mentally ill people. And she's working with intake. Yeah. And she was talking about the psychology of a, of a psychopath who does not have the capacity to have any empathy whatsoever, who's operating, and she used the description, slightly above a reptilian, because their only motivation is to get what they want, and they will do whatever they need to do, which includes, in the most severe cases, violence and w without empathy, only because they're only trying to satisfy their own needs and they, they truly don't care and they cannot, they, they don't, do not physically have the capacity to be rehabilitated in any way, shape or form. 
They are not mentally in this dimension. I no, and they're and they are. She said, "What was very interesting because she's also, you know, very spiritual, and she knows that every buddy that exists exists because it's God expressing Himself in another way." And she just said, "I don't believe that they." She says, "I believe they're a different species of human that are not well, because of their incapacity to feel. They're more like what the Greys are used to be described as." as opposed to... Well, uh, they are not completely in this dimension. They right. are not completely connected to right. your reality. Right. So therefore, they are not experiencing exactly what you're experiencing. Right. All of their experiences are in another a way. They see right. things totally differently. They experience things totally differently. Right. And have been deprived of some of the emotions that right. normal people would have and some of the normal thought processes right. that come into normal actions. So right. they are actually living in a slightly different dimension or yes. on the precipice of a yep. different dimension of thought and actions and can do not have the same kind of karmic reactions that you would have and it, it's very difficult to tell you about what they are experiencing because you couldn't relate to it because they can't relate to yours. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a whole another conversation, but it just it seemed apropos at the moment. That's a very unusual area to go to, but yeah. it is one that is important in this day and age because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that come to... Uh, to face some of these people. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Different conversation. Yes, so, it is. Yeah. Was there any other questions from anyone else? Or I didn't see. I must go questions? now. I, oh. I, I will not answer any other questions. Okay. Well, thank you very I, much, Elijah. I, am, I was not meant to be here this long. So mm. I am going to uh, pass the baton to someone else. All right. Thank you. Much love. Much love. This is Nefertiti. Welcome, Nefertiti. It is mm, a pleasure to be here. Great. Um, you were requested by Marlena, and so I'll let her begin with her first question. Greetings, Nefertiti. Thank you so much for answering our call today. Um, I have a, a few questions for you, if I may. Uh, my first question is in in regards to your uh, incarnation. Yes. Uh, at the time of uh, Akhenaten. Yes. Uh, were you uh, most? Were you human, or were, were you mostly alien when you were incarnated here? Mostly alien. Mostly alien. Yes. Thank you. Because we had we had specific things that must be done there was this was a meeting place for many species it was a safe world to come to and the egyptian culture was the perfect place to come for these meetings and for these off-world uh communications it was a a planet that was not well known at that time but we knew knew of it due to the prophecies that were given about it for the future. So we came here because we knew that the negative beings would not follow us to this place, or even think yeah. that we were going to be. Here. So that 
So it was that it was a safe place for us to meet. Uh, thank you. Uh, what was your mission, your, your specific mission during that incarnation? The specific missions for me and uh, some of the others were to bring some information to this world, but to actually plan the future um, in Orion and in Sirius and some of the other places so that it would stay nonviolent. Uh, there was some trouble in Orion, in the Orion realms, as you know. And so we came away from those areas to meet in another place so that we would be able to calm down what was happening in these other places. That was Thank one you. of our missions. Mm -hmm. And your role as queen during that time, uh, my understanding is that your your word was taken into consideration and yeah. you ruled um, with Akhenaten. Akhenaten was the one that brought the first one God thought process to this planet in some way, although it was quasi one God uh, thought processes. It was not that the, he only, uh, of course it was, he believed in one god, Atep, which was the sun god, but there was also many minor gods. But the one god thought process was that there was one main god, and that is where he became the first to bring that about. But there was also the understanding that people could keep their own gods if they believed in them but they had to believe in the one god atap yes um at one point during your your journey at that time you had separated from akhenaten and lived with your daughters somewhere else what yes. motivated that nefertiti because of you see akhenaten and i did not see eye to eye on many things. And he was not of the same uh, alien concepts that I was. And he did not want the meetings of other worlds to happen here. And he wanted to be a ruler on his own. So I allowed that to be. Uh, so I moved to a different place. I was in the Luxor area, whereas he, uh, was in a couple of different areas. I, I maintain that I lived in more the Luxor area for more of my life. Thank you. Um, at your time of departure, uh, at, well, I'll just rephrase that. At one point, we um, there was no talk about you as if you had disappeared. Were you taken off planet, um, and why? I was just, I, I did leave the planet. I wasn't taken. I, I could go back and forth from Orion Sirius to here and there because I was in, uh, I needed to speak in other places as well. But when I was on this planet, I did keep a low profile at some points. I understand. Um, are you on Earth now? You mean, am I re reincarnated or are there aspects of me on this world? Correct. The answer to that is yes. Thank you. Um, in closing, thank you for answering my questions. Would you Give us a blessing to help with the energies that are very strong and not necessarily very positive at this time. Can you help very us? Very well. I will give a blessing. It Thank will you. be in the ancient Egyptian tongue. Thank you. Eat hot, mukyat as yo.
you understand this? Yes. Kit what equore e i mokikwasi ash met niti ku. Dakas shantia frota andi. Kot yato wok fiandi shast. Nati tok waka mosrim gift yop putivis. Rehadi not scatter on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if you want to translate that if we're. I'll give you a translation, not. I won't go into depth with it because it will lose something in the translation, but it will, but you will still understand it. I asked God to be ever present in this realm due to all the wonderful things that it represents. Although at this time it is less than what it should be, I will bring energy to it with all those spirits that choose to bring positive energies as well to this realm. And may God bless it so that it continues and does not expire. Thank you and blessings to you, Nefertiti. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was a question from Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Speak. Greetings and blessings, Nefertiti. Yes. Um, I was wondering um, why, um, through our um, work today, we're finding that there was a lot of disease that was passed on from um, brother and sister, sister and brother, mother and father, whatever. And I was wondering if you were um, uh, alien, why couldn't you use the technology to correct the DNA? We were not here to do that. That was not our mission. Those that were correcting DNA were do doing that in a way that we did not agree with. And so we did not, we could have become part of that mission, but we chose to uh, not include ourselves with those particular beings. Now, as we are here and we were giving information to this society and actually helping this society in many ways we but we did it more informationally and were not uh prone to work with the dna of this planet they there were plenty of those that were already doing that and so we sort of stayed away from that because they were not doing it in a way that we were agreeing with. I've, I've um, seen on some channels where they show um, surgery, like brain surgery, done also. Um, was this within a different uh, group of aliens or? There was many different ways that they worked on human DNA to change it and to uh -huh. make it better. They took the pro cro magdon man and all those different uh, representations of early man and worked on them, and that is why there are missing links. So man chooses, as he studies uh, the evolution of mankind, to bring it to a conclusion without studying all the different facets in between. And therefore, there are very many scientific blunders on your planet when it comes to realizing or recognizing what man really is. So eventually, there will be a return of those who actually manipulated your DNA, and the questions will be answered. 
but at at this point they are only speculating on um, a TV program I think it's the discovery program or something like that there um, just recently they showed um, a skeleton or I, I mean um, a skull that has the elongated um, uh, yeah, elongated oh. skulls. Yes. Just like mine. Ah, so yes. So yes. did that I die have out? discovered my I did pass away on this planet and they did bury me here and they did find me in the Middle East. So what's happening from what I understand is at one time science well I was studying to be an archaeologist and I was dissatisfied because there was a lot of things that they were not reporting on um, and they were uh, discounting or they were just making this these. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, but this today they're now. Studies. They're bringing things to conclusions before they completely study it or accept what they have found. They cannot believe what they found. So they choose not to accept it and to ignore it. Therefore, your, your science is incomplete, and therefore that is why what you are speaking of at this time. Yes, they're starting to now um, actually show it on television. So yes, they are the program Ancient Aliens will yes. show. Yes, that's what it is. Yes. Um, another thing, it also, I'm curious about on when a lot of crystal skulls are created today. Um, they don't, they make alien crystal skulls, but they don't make the one with the elong elongated uh, skull. Is it there? Found. Oh, okay. I have one with an elongated crystal skull. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know they exist because I've seen them, <laughs> and uh, they will be found if they have not been. She is saying that she has one. Is it a modern day creation, or is it one of the original 13? Karen? She asked what? if it's a modern day or a... It does oh. not matter. No, we can't hear her. Oh, sorry. It's a modern day one. It's not yeah. a. It's it's not. There is an ancient one that is part of the uh, control system for the Stargates, but it's obviously not part of what has been discovered yet. Yeah. It will be discovered in the area where they discovered my body. Ooh. Thank you very much, Nefertiti, for um, answering my questions. You are welcome. Blessed be. Blessed be. Interesting statement. Uh, there's a question from um, from Lucia. Go ahead, Lucia. Yes, hello. hello, greetings, Nefertiti. I was um, I was wondering if what was your relationship with the Hathors, if any? I recognize your spirit, <laughs> and a few others that are here as well. But yes, I knew the Hathors. They were not involved in our talks at the time, but they were sending their energy of healing to it. We did have galactic conferences that they were part of, and we do know them from those conferences. But for the, the Syrian, Orion, Octorian, uh, and the, the species that were here in the Egyptian time, the blue avians, the, the, the dog species, the canine species. We, we were all speaking of a particular war and trying to bring peace to the Orion area, uh, which was becoming much more troublesome at that time. And so with these different conferences that we had, there was much success in bringing a some peace to the Orion Wars, as they were called. Yes, thank you. Um, 
I, well, I, I'm a little surprised that you recognize me, and so I, I would like to know what was my relationship to you. I cannot recognize what that was yet, but I feel the energies from you, and I recognize them, as I do recognize some other energies here in the room and there out, out there. The telepathy that is existing between us is palpable. Thank you. Um, now, we know the Hathors are great musicians, and I was wondering if you have any advice uh, to those who are using sound as a modality to heal here on Earth. Sound can do many things and is a great asset to all species. You will find that vibration will be able to be used as an anti-gravity device. Sound will also be part of your transporter machine because all vibration is part of uh, <laughs> transportation in some ways. Uh, you will find that it will be a, a great part of your future. Yes, do you have any practical advice having to do with um, the modality to heal with sound? Sound um, with technology will be a great healing device and will also be part of your future. It will be, I am being told that I am not allowed to say a few of the things that I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. However, Sound will be part of your future and be a great healing device and be something that will be a cure to many of the things that will happen in your future. Cancer will be cured by sound. All right, I will stop. Okay, could you comment on tuning forks for a moment? Tuning forks are a great thing. Let me tell you what they do. When you hit a tuning fork, it will bring all the vibrations in the room to an equal level. So if it, if it lasts long enough, you will be able to bring a great equilibrium to the room and therefore everyone and everything in that room will be able to think more precisely on the same level, be able to do the same work on the same level. Once you change the vibration of a room and make it very similar one to another, you will be able to work greater positive energy and healing within that room. Okay, thank you so much. Blessings. There's a question within the room. Please, go ahead. And Efertiti's Barbara. I saw your sculpture in a museum, which is very strong connection yes was there a connection with you with you, with you yes that. your energy seems familiar as well as marlena's and lucia's and a few other ones here as well but yes there was connections you were there in the that egyptian culture when we were doing our uh collaborating with other species Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question from uh, Eva and then Marlena. I have a quick question, but I think you already answered it. Um, I really feel connection to you for some reason. When I, you speak, just something inside of me vibrates, but I guess um, that will be the same question to some other people here. Yes. There are many of you that I feel... Um, kinship to because you were there in the either the Atlantean cultures or the Egyptian cultures or the uh, Greek cultures which I also was part of all of these but you see I was a strong presence and therefore am able to relate to many of you that were there at that time I was a diviner and I knew the how to find things through a vibration and energy 
and I could find people as well. And so therefore, some of you I was able to find for different reasons at different areas and different times in different cultures. Thank you. This is truly interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Marlene, go ahead. Yes, uh, I, the question I have, um, there's many things that are said concerning yourself and Tutankhamun. Um, were, just to clear up things, were you Tutankhamun's mother? Yes. Thank you. And you did not kill your son, is that no, correct? No, of course not. But okay, well those are other, uh, this is misguided other. information that is out there and uh, people are he questioning. Started, but not by me. You would not have accepted that in the first place, right? Yes. Of correct. Okay, thank he you. He was murdered, but not by me. The reason that I am connected to him is so that others may escape from being prosecuted. They say that I murdered him because he was not uh, able to rule properly. This is not necessarily true, but he, he was not the kind of ruler that many wanted for this particular time in history so therefore he was his life was taken so that someone else may come in his place is it correct to say that his type of ruling if i can put it that way uh had it been instituted would it would have lasted over uh millenniums but instead they decided to take him out they took him out because his thought processes were much more kind, much more humanitarian. And for that per period of time, they did not want that kind of ruler. So he was avant-garde. He was ahead of his time. Yes. Okay. Thank you very Is much. Is there a thought back here? Could you help me with something? Yes. Because you can find things. Um, I It's good to be with you. I've lost my Labradorite crystal that I use as a hospice stone, and our dog is transitioning either today or tomorrow, um, and I would like to find it for him to be with. Ah, a hospice stone. Um, when is the last time that you saw it? I don't remember. It's in my house somewhere. It is in your home. Yeah. One moment, your dog will benefit from it being in the home, mm -hmm. no matter if it's found or not, because the energy of this stone is, is permeates all through your household mm -hmm. and is a strong presence there. Okay. And therefore, it is in your bedroom somewhere. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marlena, you had a question. Go ahead. Is the dog staying in the bedroom a lot? Yeah. That's why. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. I had to can fi uh, finish my thought process there. The Thank dog you. is staying in that bedroom because the hospice stone is in that room. Okay, Marlene, what, I'm sorry, what, you, had you finished? I, I, did, I wasn't sure. Yes, thank you. I'm finished for now. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, Don has a question for you. Hello, Nefertiti. Blessings. Um, my question is from, I, I'm, I'm monitored, by the way, the YouTube feed, and I get a, a great number of questions here. Um, I have a question here from Lilypad, and her question is, uh, the para, paracas in Peru skeleton, is that the same as you? I was in Peru, but I did not stay in Peru. This was a relative of mine and not me. My essence was found in the Middle East, and they have already uh, exhumed it. Thank you. Um, that's all I have at this time. Thank you. Ah, very well. Okay, Blessings. and then uh, David has a question. Go ahead, David. Hello, Nefertiti. How are you? 
So I'm wondering about um, utilizing light language that's new, and I'm wondering if the light language I speak, if there's a lot of people that speak it, it's kind of new to me, and they said it had ancient and some Egyptian origins. It's Sumerian. Um, okay. It's not Egyptian, yeah. <laughs> so it's not any, any relation to Egyptian? It, a Sumerian and Egyptian do have a relationship. Uh, and some of the dialects from Egypt and Samaria have come together at some point because of the union between the aliens that were rulings at the different times in India and in Egypt. Remember that Atlantis stretched into the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean at one point was much easier to uh, get across because of the land masses that were there. So Sumeria or the Indian cultures that were in charge at that time and in Egypt were easy trade with one another. So therefore, and the, of course, the Atlanteans were part of that as well. So there was much uh, there was much communication in uh, in at some periods of time in the very great ancient history between Samaria and Egypt. So therefore, your language has some similarities to Egyptian dialect and to some um, Atlantean and Lumerian dialect. Yes. But you have to learn to control what you say. Okay, and uh, how do I how do I do that or how do I what Whenever you're speaking the language, think of what the the words that you want to say as you are speaking the language so that it will have some meaning when it comes out. Um, now, when you do your prayers, your intention is for a prayer, and so that is what will come out. But this just random speaking may not have much meaning. And and how do I utilize and utilize it to help with healing and ascension, yeah. toning, and the light language? What kind of ways? Whenever you're speaking it, think about what you are, what intention you want to use the language for for healing, for whatever intention that you use it for, that intention will come forward. But if you just speak it, you may just say something random, which is what you said. That that happened yesterday too. It was very, very interesting, but I didn't, it's very new to me, so I didn't, I don't understand it. I just am practicing and speaking. Okay. Is it? Is there a lot of people that speak it? Is this something that's rare? Well, it's, not a, it's not common, I don't think, but uh, what you said the first time was, my heart is a sensitive bubble, and I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> but, um, but I'm sure that it has meaning for someone. Okay. And and with like the, the toning, and this, can you integrate it with the other healings? Like Absolutely. Um, languages are integratable one with another. If if the intention is pure and proper, they can work properly together. Okay, so if I'm doing healing, I can just have the intention and then go back and forth between toning and sending healing. And if your intention's pure, and it will work fine. Okay, is there any other other guidance for utilizing it or what I should do with it? My goodness. Use it for whatever intention you wish. Make sure that it is a positive intention. Okay. Beautiful. Do we do we have any connections? Do you pass I am not feeling a close connection with you. I do sense that I knew you at one time, but that was very, very long ago. Okay. You were part of 
Jesus family. Yes. I was not part of that era, but that is your strongest, that is your strongest connection. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Love to you. Peace. Okay. Hi. Um, there's a question from uh, Wendy in Languages Lights, and she's asking, uh, can you please comment on the connection to the sound applications of light languages and how they were used in your time and how they were and, and how we can much more fully understand and apply the various forms of them now? The light languages also were used for healing at that time. Mm -hmm. But light and sound were used for more technological things at that, uh, during that era. Uh, so lifting rocks and stones into place that were very heavy. Uh, vibration could be used and sound used to lift these rocks so that you could push them into place. Um, you will find that your science has discovered how to do this already, and it is not known if that was the case in m building these megalithic uh, societies or not, but they will discover that it is that vibration and sound was used to build uh, these temples and to move these great stones into place. Now, also, it was used for communication. Communications, uh, you will find that there are many areas in some of the temples and buildings that when you stand in one place, the sound permeates through all the incredible areas of the temple one place and you can speak to everyone in the building and the building it matters not the size of it it will permeate through all the the, the whole building so this is one use of the toning and sound uh, actually as well in your case wendy the toning is very healing. The toning is very, uh, it's change oriented, meaning that you can change how people are feeling with your toning. It sends out emotional uh, uh, powerful emotional um, in instructions to the being be it healing or emotional healing or a thought process changes you have already experienced all these things and it is actually uh with the hathors part of your magic because you are able to control and manipulate uh, what happens with sound Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there's a question from Don. Go ahead, Don. Hello, it's me again. Uh, blessings. Um, I am, okay, I am a watcher. Um, I have, uh, pardon me? Get up and up over It's a vision. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm having a difficult time speaking a light language. I, I don't know what my blockage is. Um, can you remove it if possible? I just, it doesn't, it doesn't I, form I, for me. Your, your trouble with light language is that all the light languages of the universe are part of, of your vocabulary. And to speak just one at a time is not something that you are used to doing being as a creator being so therefore as you are someone that is able to speak light languages they all want to come at once and so they block each other out um right now what you can do is this find yourself in a singularity situation 
block all but one language at a time. You do did not know to do this. So therefore, in your mind, speak your English words and put one meaning on them. And then as you block all these languages, change that English word into a one different word. Say it is love, Ika. Change one word at a time, and then your block will be cleared eventually. Much love. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And then there's another question from Marlena. Go ahead, Marlena. Catch us, Shukta. Hello. Uh, yes. it, it is said, Nefertiti, Nefertiti, I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> I'm getting your name all. It is all right. It is said that you are you were versed, very versed in magic. Yes. How uh, did you use your magic? I used it to control the people that were around me, and I used it to stay safe. I also used it to, um, uh, well, you see, when I said to, to stay safe, it was to block passages, to uh, b block them from hearing my thoughts. There are many aliens in that time period that had great telepathy, and I could block their tele telepathic efforts in finding me. You see, I was a telepath also, and so the, to find me, they would try to use their telepath telepathy to, uh, to engage with my own telepathy. And I could block that. I could also block them from finding me in many locations. In fact, I'm using magic right now to uh, keep them at bay because I do have those that still want to find me, and I do not want to uh, them to find me here today. So therefore, and also to protect my family, I, I could not save my son common because of I was trying to block attacks against myself as they were also attacking him. So therefore, it was that I was very sad to learn that he had died as he did because I was protecting my own self with magic. Most of the time when I used my magic, I was defending myself or blocking. So you were defending yourself and they were looking for you because of the information that you contained? Yes, and I still have lots of information that they want and cannot have. Understood. I know all the different keys to the Sphinx. I know all the different information that is connected to the underworld in the 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 pyramids, and I do know all the information for Abu Simbel. Mm. Thank you for clarifying. You have given us so much information um, to think about, and um, you clarified so many questions, question marks, and uh, sabotaged information written here and there and translated through time. So I personally thank you so much from my You're heart welcome. to yours. Yes, you are welcome. This will be found out to be true anyway in the future. I'm only allowed to tell you what you will and do know. Thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> There's a question here. Yeah? Sure, go ahead. You are a finder of things. We are missing a particular ring in this house. It's, it's not meant to be found. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that was a short one. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, this is a magic ring and it should not be belonging to this person. Mm, all right. The yeah. magic in this ring is potent mm -hmm. and it was meant to go and it disappeared into thin air, literally. As you were watching it go, yes. it did not appear anywhere else. Right. And the, 
The house has been searched and it is not here. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet it was right here when yes. it disappeared. Yes. Therefore, it's not meant to be found. Okay. At this time? At this time. All right. Or in this dimension. Um, it's actually a re relic. It had many colors in, in it. And those colors were representative of different species and different places. Mm -hmm. This is something that you had sort of understood already. What? Was that the, because I was the one that picked that thing? Yes. Okay. Um, there's a question from Ishmael. And or excuse me, there's a question from Tarek. Sorry, go ahead, Tarek. Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, I would like uh, to ask about uh, organ, organ uh, energy, about uh, or, organite uh, energy. Oh, organite energy, yes. Yeah, organite. Uh, I heard uh, the trees uh, use it for uh, protect uh, himself from uh, uh, heat and also the pyramid, uh, they use it in the pyramid. So how much I can know about uh, organite? Organite is also good for human beings for protection. It is something that goes along with their uh, with organic substances. You that, as you might understand at a basic level, organite will help humans to be protected, and also it helps them to heal. Organite is a healing. Um, it's it can be used in a healing way when done with great intention now it works with organic materials organite is working with all things that are organic so therefore it does have healing properties protective properties and is very useful to humans is that is that your question Tarek? did you have more uh, yes, I, I would like to know uh, how the trees use it for uh, protect themselves from uh, heat, for come for protecting from sun. Uh, yes. And, uh, weather. Organite is organic. So what it does is when the trees, uh, when it can be saturated. Uh, put into the trees or saturated by the trees it pre, it is uh it it is a bit of an alchemy kind of thing because it turns itself into a a bit of gold gold actually resists heat so in trees the alchemy of organite is that it takes on the it is not the actual element of gold, but some of the qualities of gold, and that is that gold can uh, refract, refract heat. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Yes. Okay. I was told some years ago that I had a crystal that was it packed downstairs in the basement that if I didn't take it out, it's going to be taken away from me. Yes. Was it taken away? Yes. Now, I have a little crystal that has pyramids on it. Was that the crystal that was taken away and given back to me? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, there's a message with that. Okay. There's a message with that pyramid, and it is Tikrak Koshkut. And Zubsyeviet re anzifat talko tari. Hold on to me. Do not let me go. I am part of your protective 
mirror. And that means that it is something that will reflect your life into a different area of use. Perhaps a new idea, a new creativity, or a new purpose. It is a creative mirror. Those little pyramids on it? Yes. I was told that's information only. I need to know that will help humanity in the future. Is that exactly? That is where the message is. And it is part of your craft, your art, your mission. Kita. Um, there is a question from Deb. Go ahead, Deb. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. First question is, what is our relationship, mine and yours, if any? Actually, you were a daughter of mine. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are one of my daughters. My... Which one, I do not know. <laughs> because their energies were very similar. Yeah, I was getting goosebumps on my head <laughs> as you were talking. Yes. sati. <laughs> you will find your essence within my information. And also, you will travel soon. Continue. Okay. Um, did you have anything you. else, Deb, or no? Yes, okay. yes. Um, Go ahead. Uh, when two mirrors face each other, uh, um, do they create a portal? It is possible with intention that they could create a portal. This portal is in definite it's an indefinite portal and it's actually a, a portal to another dimension yeah i the house that we bought that we're living in right now had the our, the, our bathroom was full of mirrors it's it was horrible and there were several that faced each other and we had constantly my husband sees and see spirits and people. We constantly had traffic walking in and out of our bedroom. Awesome. <laughs> and he could see them. I mean, a cowboy. Uh, we had, I mean, he, walking all the time. And I could see the negative ones. He sees the positive ones. Yeah. So we, we had to take down these mirrors. And I realized it when I was sitting on the toilet and I saw the mirrors. In, in, I mean, with the one behind me was a medicine cabinet and ahead of me was a mirror over the sink and I that's when I saw it it was in, infinite it is infinite. and I realized it's a portal yes it is infinite when these when it creates that kind of a portal it is an infinite portal and it can reach many dimensions so therefore well, there were a couple of them in there so we started you might want to put the hey raw symbol on it one of the mirrors that faces uh, one another and that the K Ra symbol is a line, a loop, and a line. And this will cause the, the dimensions to close. Okay. It's a very simple symbol. It's a line, a loop, and a line. So you, it looks like this. Okay. Well, I took down the medicine cabinet on that one, but the other one, we tried to take down the big mirror over the tub because it faces another medicine cabinet. It and um, we, when he tried to take down the big mirror, it was glued and a, neg a man, I could see the man come right out. I mean, it was not a good guy. Yes. <laughs> but it's in the me. corner so that it looks like a design. No one will know what it means but it will stop the dimensions from opening. Okay, great. It's a line, 
a loop and a line. Okay. Put it right Got in the it. corner, in the right hand corner. It will stop the dimensions from opening. Great. A Thank very you. simple symbol, but yet what it does is take the energy and filters it out. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have a short question. Namaste. Yes, a short question I'm somewhere. And back to the crystal, I'm starting to doubt myself of things that come to me, but I found that it's time for me to start working with that crystal, meditate, and connect with it. Yes. Okay, that's what I was feeling. Your designs on your crafts will take you places. You will, it will open many doors. And this is something that you will want to walk through. Okay. Is there another question? There's many questions. Uh, there's a question from Temple, please. Go ahead, Temple. Hi, hopefully you can hear me. I'm sorry, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties this morning. Ah, your energy reflects many, many worlds. That's exciting. Do you recognize me from your world? Yes. You are more Atlantean. What I about recognize you as an Atlantean uh, trader. That uh, Oh, no, an Atlantean priestess that okay. I ran into or had some uh, communication with at some period. You um, were a guardian of the crystals, is that correct? That is correct. I was also in your family when you were with uh, Akhenaten. Ah, uh, yes, very nice. But I, re I remember the, the priestess with the crystals. That would be me, yes. <laughs> um, my question for you is, I'm trying to just sort this all out in a 3D historical fashion. So I, and I, I was told that you already spoke about this a little bit, about being the mother of King Tut. Yeah. Okay, I'm wondering if you were the biological mother of King Tut. Yes. That's very interesting. Because um, I think I was given some wrong information then at some point. Because I was told that um, I was the mother of King Tut, but also came back in as Anku Zunamun as the wife. So maybe there were some lines crossed at some point. As far as I remember, I gave birth to Tut, Tutankhamun, but there were those that there, those that, there were many that claimed to be his mother because of he was such a beautiful child. Interesting. That is all right. Do not That's, worry. No, the, <laughs> the truth will come through at some point in the the right way the right manner perhaps if you were his mother did you did you feel that you uh the information was true at the time i did yes yes i did um and i i actually had i actually had an experience where someone kept reiterating that i was like a piece of you and I kept saying, no, 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 I'm not a piece of you, Nefertiti. Perhaps you are part of me. And that is why we gave birth to Tuck. Ah, I see. And then, so just so I understand my history correctly, so Moses was after you, is that correct? That is right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And maybe we can chat at some other this point. Many blessings. I feel that you probably were a portion of me at some time, and that is why we are the mother of Tut. Interesting. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, following the Moses question, there's a question from Trinity uh, saying, please uh, say how close you were to Moses, and is the story of him being adopted by a pharaoh true? It is all true, yes. And it was after me that Ramses ruled. Okay. How, how close was it from, from Moses to you? It, it was not far. 
okay. hundred years, maybe. Okay. Two hundred. All right. Just a matter of a couple centuries, perhaps. Okay. Um, there's questions from uh, there's question from Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Christine, are you still with us? Sorry, by now I forgot my question. Sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> if you think about it, we'll come back to you. Alex has a question. Go ahead, Alex. Greetings. Greetings. I have a question about healing. Let's say we have a patient and we will sound. Sound meaning vibration frequency is um, Egyptian in that era is like a permission slip um, they work with sound like thing they discover that or they inherited from other beings right correct so if uh, the patient have a mulling problem like a cancer that develop inside the body and uh, creates the its own energy field electromagnetic field right yes what they okay. is what is the the way that we could take cancer out of the body was this everything has its own vibration the body the cancer the 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 heart has a different vibration sort of than than the rest of the body but so the everything within the body has its own vibration we were able to bring our technology to a place where it could it could latch on to that specific vibration of the cancer right and remove it or transport it out right and if you change that vibration of the cancer the immunitary, immunitary system will, will will dissolve that eat it right you could do it that way as well thank you yes Thank you very much. Change the vibration of the cancer. If that, if it was too advanced to to tr transport out, so it's smaller versions of the cancer could just be transported out, and you don't have to worry about changing the vibration. But there are methods to attaching to that vibration, and then it's a longer method but you can change the vibration of that cancer into the vibration of whatever part of the body that it was in. So therefore, there are different methods and different ways to cure cancer. All right, I understand it. That this is for me is a little um, advanced, but um, yes, yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. There's a question from AJ from uh, a while ago, so I want to get to it before we, before we go. Um, it says, is there any, any advice for someone who often feels frustrated and hopeless for the rest of humanity with the state that they're in? Sometimes I can't help but feel annoyed. Um, so. you, must, you must discover who you are. Uh, and or if there is someone that's feeling this annoyed feeling or this this uh, hopeless feeling, they must look in and see what it is that is making them feel this way. There are many different things in this earth uh, realm that can cause you to feel this kind of frustration and ongoing annoyance but you must identify it first. This is what you must do first, is identify what it is, and then bring in the positive energy to extract whatever it is that is causing this problem. But for the most part, what is the problem is, is that you are not being yourself. You are not able to function as a full, and vital human being so therefore there is this distraction this this thing within you that is not you you must be yourself and the closer you come 
to being the actual person that God created you to be, the happier and more secure you will be in this life. If you are functioning as a valid human being, functioning as in your purpose for your life, then you will remain happy because things will not bother you. Things will not get on your nerves because you are functioning properly and those things are not. But if you are not functioning properly, then these other things will bother you because you are not being yourself. You are not reacting as the purpose or as the full human being that you should be. Does this make sense to you? Because, uh, yeah, go ahead. Because if you are yourself, true to yourself, other things outside of you that come to you will not bother you. Thank you. That was a question from AJ in the chat, so I hope uh, that AJ was able to get the answer. Uh, there's, we have time for two more questions if, if we keep them short. Okay. Because we're coming up to the top of the hour. Um, Jay Lowe says, uh, hi, I have a question. I had a dream where I saw baby orcas or killer whales near, near the shore. I was delighted to see them, so I entered the water and decided to pet one. What does my dream symbolize? Your, your, the whales on your planet signify light holders, and they signify a species of whale that was, that is in the whale and dolphin alliance that is part of this universe and is the whale were, were given to this planet as a gift to hold light for this planet and to help this planet rise. So you are someone that is supporting this ascension process, someone that is supporting that light and that vibrational effect on this world. So you are in alliance with the whale and dolphins in the sense that they, you know that they are part of a greater good. Thank you. And, and Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Thank you, I'll be very quick. Um, last Wednesday, I saw something on sky, on the sky which is completely unusual. I live in Providence, Rhode Island, if that helps. There was, big part of the sky was in stripes. So I, again, I've never seen that because it was really like when one third of the entire sky was covered with stripes. So do you have a clue that doesn't look like human made to me? Were they chemtrails? No, because cane trays are really lines here and there, but that was a huge, huge sky. All right. The clouds it's formed cool. stripes. In that case, it was this. Your weather is going through many different changes. The cloud formations have been uh, in very interesting and unusual shapes recently because of the different man-made weather patterns that you are experiencing. Also faced with the non-man-made weather patterns. And so they are making some very interesting uh, geographic or, or what, is, what is the word I'm saying? Geometric shapes in the sky. And therefore, you may have witnessed some of this unusual weather patterns that are coming forth from these uh, man-made uh, for, uh, formations meeting the non-man-made or natural formations. Thank you. It almost looked like there, is, there was some wave going on, some vibration. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, it's, your jet stream is not in a usual pattern as it would be it, before man-made weather came along. So your jet stream 
there are so many things that have to do with this. There's the wobble of the earth, the 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 natural weather formations, the man-made weather formations, the axis being off. So many things are affecting weather patterns right now, and they and also there are energies from outside this planet that are actually affecting them as well. So you're going to get some very unusual things in the sky these days. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. May I ask one more question? Yes, yes. Oh. Ah, question. Oh, sorry. Yes. Children. This morning I was doing Reiki for forming Reiki on myself. Reiki, yes. yes. And then there's like this kind of a design in front of my face. Oh, you saw aliens. aliens. Huh? You saw aliens. Two. Yes. Is there a connection in the future with them? They are agarthans. They are from under the earth. I thought so. That's they are, they are, they are appearing to many people at this time because they are um, wanting to be part of disclosure you know, on this planet. But they are not permitted to come out yet. But so they are appearing in front of people to make people realize that there are aliens and that there are you. Uh, beings here already. Yes. Will they be connecting with me more? They will be connecting with all of humanity eventually. But they are, to those that are sensitive to visualizing and are sensitive to, oh, you are sensitive to many other aliens as well. So, yes, if you are sensitive to aliens, they will make themselves aware to you. Thank you, and and we're really uh, out of time, so I want to thank you so very much, and everyone has commented that they would really like for you to please come back. There's so much information they would like to ask and many more questions that they would love to ask, so please accept our open invitation to come back, uh, hopefully in, in two weeks when, you're, when, you're, when Jim is back. Special. Thank you. Thank you. And there's also been a request of a blessing from you before we go. Yes, I already heard that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Mokwati kieta wa Many blessings to you. Why the interpretation is this, which loses something, of course, when spoken into English. But it is that the skies will bring signs to you, and the many are looking for days of darkness and days of light. These prophecies and things are all yet to come, but are great signs of the end of an era. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if there's anyone else that has a blessing, but we'll wait until Jim comes back. But Nefertiti, thank you very much. Much love to you. And again, it was a pleasure for us and an honor to speak with you. It is my pleasure. Great. And my honor. Thank you. Hello? Hi, welcome back. Thank you. What an unexpected surprise Nefertiti turned out to be. What a what an amazing wealth of uh, knowledge and also Elijah, of course. Very, very good. So, so we're running a little late, but uh, we will. Uh, we have three people here that want to do blessings. All right, so, do in, yeah. go ahead, uh, Temples. We'll start with you. Go ahead. All right. Nashataya sa uko ashana ilepu uku kigata tia sati mushtiya sana halabi guajata inaka alata navyokuta tia sasha 
ma aha na ya dane ko pa itia sha ta ti anata ma la au ku pati asha ni hitiata namaste the skies are full of signs and full of wonders these days but what is more important is that the truth of this age comes to fruition and that life continues in this world and in this realm also that it is translated into the fourth dimension as promised by so many prophecies in this galaxy we are here to bring these truths to you in many different ways many blessings thank you go ahead um lucia Akasha Sanomi Kishi Sila Kalasho, Hasho Sana Akosha Sikala, Hasho Nama Kashi Siki, Asho Saka Lasha Sinimi, Akasha Saka Lasha Sonama, Hokala Oshinimi, Osala Akasha Sikisi, Asho Nama Akalonimi. Namaste. God in his wondrous ways is doing so many things here on this planet. God in his wondrous ways are lifting up different men and women to do great deeds and bring great information to this world we pray for them that they are successful in all their efforts thank you and uh, deb has or oh, david has a blessing go ahead Shikawa ate ke kunu uchui ete samahana lava atuko, shiwata ke neba e ushkinawa atan, shiwahata lava ko. Let love and healing reign on this planet. This era is one of great healing and great understandings, and let the information of this realm be true and honest that it move forward in a great and wonderful pattern much love and many blessings thank you and then lastly we have deb go ahead deb deb oh sorry he's gonna speak now <sighs> Aka i no osa ayaka, ona ia a, no so i kata kai noa, no so di naka yetos, ma i ka ota siya a, no sa i ka a, lo e ka ita, no na ita ka soyata, no na i ka ayaka, ma i ka ota sa i ka, i a ka aya, ona ia, o ka ka ita soyata, ma i ka ta isa, na i ka oa. Namaste. This is a day in an age of many dreams and visions. Do not take them lightly, for they have meaning and they have their place in this understanding of your world. They will turn out to bring information that is not being able to be brought to this world in a way that is beautiful and is what is that word? I don't know. They use a word that I've never heard of before. But in a way that is beautiful and will be understood by many. Much love. There is a word in there that I couldn't translate. <laughs> it's okay. Energetically, I'm sure it, it, it got what it needed to do. So, Jim, thank you so very much. What a wonderful webinar. Um, I want to wish everyone a wonderful uh, rest of their weekend and a nice uh, Mother's Day for tomorrow. So please call your mama. Give your mamas a call. <laughs> uh, yes. Happy Mother's yeah. Day, everybody. Yeah, happy yeah. Mother's Day. For those that want to do the Galactic Energy Healing class next week, uh, please get your money in and your request in now. 
so that we can get those uh, links out to you on Saturday and Sunday. Right. And next week, our guest is Rob Gothier. So please. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I'm so very Rob will be here. That. Yes. Very yes, he is, he'll be here, so please, he will he'll, he will not be channeling, he'll be doing an interview, because for him it's so early, he doesn't channel until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so it'll be a full interview, but you can ask him anything about any of his past channelings or anything that he has learned over his many years of channeling. So he'll be here, so we're very excited about that. And also, too, directly following this webinar in two hours, uh, if you're a member of the Keepers of the Code group on Facebook, it's a it's a group dedicated completely to light language. Uh, Human Colony has really stepped in and started doing a Keepers of the Code uh, light language webinar every Saturday at uh, three. three. So that is hosted by Anna Nunez, and she is an amazing light language speaker she does all the nice hand thingies and she draws and she does everything and sings and and so she she hosts that so if you want to join that go and join first keepers of the code and then you can join that webinar and in june 1st she will be she will be uh hosting she'll be a guest on the saturday hukalo webinar so we have a lot to look forward to and then jim of course in two more weeks so okay. yeah right. yeah so I did want to say that uh, for the class next weekend, if you are interested um, to email Jim or myself um, and uh, we'll get the link on how to make the payment. Perfect. Perfect. So do you okay. have her address or email? Mine's Jim Reiki at Gmail. Hers is a speed six, four, five, six at Gmail. Yeah, we really need to get a button of you for you guys on the website so people can just go click and go right to you. So yep, it would be good. That would be good. We'll, we'll work on that. I'm, I'm making it. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Much love to you. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.